Um, hi, everyone. Um, as Cameron said, thank you very much for the introduction. My name is Harriet Glidden. Um, I'm a postdoc at UCL, um, and I work in the iSense uh, Research Consortium, and I'll be kind of giving you a brief introduction to iSense today. Um, so iSense is an EPSRC 11 million pound five-year interdisciplinary research center. Um, we use social media, mobile diagnostics, web searches, and lab tests to create early warning sensing systems for infectious diseases. So the iSense team is led by UCL, um, but we also have engineering and uh, science partners at uh, Imperial College London, LSHTM, uh, Newcastle University, and the University of Surrey, as well as a whole host of industrial and clinical partners. So our vision is to create a new generation of uh, early warning sensing systems to track uh, outbreaks of infections earlier than uh, ever before. So um, possibly one of the most important areas of our research is investigating the needs of end users. And this is actually led by um, Rosanna Peeling, who spoke earlier today. Um, so one of the important things with uh, using mobile connected diagnostic tests is ensuring that the public um, don't have concerns about sharing health data uh, over mob mobile phones. So we've done a lot of um, building ethical frameworks uh, for creating responsible technologies and, um, and providing that data security and confidence uh, in the system. So, uh, yeah. And we also have um, really strong clinical partners uh, with the Africa Health Research Institute in KwaZulu-Natal, uh, where we do some HIV work and also um, the NHS partners within the UK. Um, so pandemic influenza rates as one of um, the gravest concerns to human health. Um, and we're using uh, computer science to track um, web searches. So whenever you get ill, who doesn't like to Google their symptoms, right? So we, we can use that information, anonymized search data, to track uh, outbreaks of infection, such as pandemic flu, earlier than would be possible. Also, who doesn't like to complain about their symptoms? So we can use microblogging sites like Twitter to also track um, uh, outbreaks at, for example, mass gatherings like festivals. Um, seasonal flu is also a, a problem for sort of different reasons. And we're using um, self-flu tests um, and and mobile phone apps to kind of provide that connectivity to um, healthcare systems to allow um, the tracking of seasonal flu. We're also creating biobarcode assays um, using advanced nanomaterials um, and using mobile phone readers to interpret quite complicated multi-biomarker uh, assay. Um, our team in Newcastle is developing um, a whole host of diagnostics for bacterial infections, specifically MRSA, C. diff, uh, and E. coli. They're harnessing the power of genomics to um, identify new sort of tokens to, um, to diagnose bacterial infections. Uh, we're also using CMOS chips and really interestingly, cantilever nanomechanical sensors, which can tell you um, the antimicrobial drug susceptibility profile of a, a bacterial infection by tracing how much of that bacterial sample is live or dead. And that's actually a lot faster than culture methods, which are often used at the moment. We're also using advanced nanomaterials in the early detection of HIV, so for antigen detection rather than antibody detection, and uh, um, surface acoustic wave sensors. So this is a OJ Bio sensor in the middle here, and that's um, a company based in Japan with who we have a collaboration. So I suppose what we can really offer, and I should mention that iSense is really quite upstage, upstage um, or upstream research compared to some of the, the presentations we've heard today. So we're really looking kind of 10 years, 20 years further down the line. Um, and something that we're very excited about is um, advanced nanomaterials. So I actually did my PhD on quantum dots. Quantum dots are fluorescent nanoparticles um, that are bright enough to be seen using a mobile phone camera. 
You can use them for multiplexing because of their broad excitation spectra and narrow emission spectra. So these um, quantum dots on the left-hand side here um, are being excited by the same uh, LED, but they all emit in separate kind of well-separated emission peaks. And that can be really useful if you want to detect multiple biomarkers at the same time. Also using gold nanoparticles and gold nanostars, we can make ultra-sensitive um, diagnostic, diagnostic tests that can detect uh, down to one molecule of a biomarker. Um, and I suppose another aspect that we can really offer a lot of expertise in is lateral flow assays. So um, we build a lot of lateral flow assays, but we also build um, apps and advanced image capture techniques to really um, read these lateral flow assays very accurately. So you can, be, you can have people doing self-tests in a whole host of environments with different lighting, different kind of um, angles and things. And our advanced image capturing will kind of um, take note of that and still give you a sensitive uh, result. Um, multiple biomarker or biobarcode bio um, tests are also being developed, and, um, and then mobile phone apps to kind of provide that connectivity and online clinical care pathways. So one excellent example of that is the SD pathway, um, or SD consortium, which are, um, they're providing clinical care pathways for people conducting chlamydia uh, tests in their own homes. Um, and something else that we're really interested in pursuing is freeze-drying uh, reagents for complex tests onto paper supports, um, carrying out stress tests to ensure kind of uh, stability and long shelf life. Um, and I suppose maybe something that's less sexy in the diagnostics business is sample processing. And it's a real shame because it's so important, but that's um, something that we can also kind of help with. And then optimization of that sensitivity using novel capture ligands um, and novel labels. So I think, yeah. Um, so I guess the challenges for our work is ensuring end user adoption is successful. So one way to mitigate that, uh, that risk is um, to have that really strong engagement with end users using NHS test beds and e-clinical pathways to make sure that what we're creating is actually going to be useful at the end of the road. Um, with the ethical frameworks around data privacy, that's, again, very important for end user adoption. And of course, technological challenges, which I'm sure you don't need me to tell you, um, are quite significant. And I suppose uh, where we see iSense fitting in is kind of using genomics, nanotechnology, and microelectronics to combine with all the advances in telecoms and big data and, and then prov um, feeding that through a kind of clinical and health economic evaluation. So I'd just like to finish by thanking um, the whole of iSense. If I can't answer your questions, I will be able to direct you to someone who can within the consortium. And I'd particularly like to thank uh, the director of iSense, uh, Professor Rachel McKendry, who's actually my boss. So I should definitely mention her. And that's, that's me. Thank you.